Hello everybody and welcome back to Tom's Tips. Okay, so I've not been about for a while um, because um, I don't do anything now, I'm retired. But I have a forum called tomplum.boz.net which you're all welcome to come and have a look at if you're getting stuck with any problem, plumbing problems. Uh, we can put it right over there. It's not just myself, there's a couple of other good plumbers, we're quite a few good plumbers and other people as well, uh, do-it-yourself people, plasterers, painters, joiners, tilers, you name it, mechanics, they're all over there. So they can offer you some advice in other areas as well that I'm not so good at. So anyway, what, the reason I'm doing this video today is because one of the members over there is struggling doing a um, compression fitting. He said he always ends up uh, with his pliers slipping off and his... Um, adjustable spanner springing away and he's having an awful trouble so I said okay well I'll come and do just a practical demonstration using and all you need is uh, an adjustable pair of spanners adjustable spanner and uh, a grip or two pairs of grips or two adjustable spanners as long as you've got two types of wrenches you can't go wrong now these this one this is one of the first spanners I'll look for out of my box. It's an adjustable spanner, so and it's got a wide jaw. It goes that wide, so it'll fit most fittings just using that one spanner. You can do from 10 mm to 28. And if you do anything over 28, um, you're, you're in you're in out of depth anyway. So that spanner is one of the handiest spanners in the world, and it only costs £3.50. And, and there's a link to that on, on my channel too if you want to come on it because you don't have to go paying 20 quid for a spanner when that one at £3.50 um, I'll do it, it'll be most of them and another one, this also was uh, given a link to on my channel is a pair of grips that cost £3.70 now I've had these uh, a couple of years now and they've been great they were so good I thought I'm having two pairs so I bought another pair as well because it's that good. So it, that's another link that you don't have to pay a lot of money to get a good pair of grips. Now then, let's have a look what um, our friend's doing wrong. I'll bring the camera in and show you the correct way to do it. Okay, so this is the correct way of doing a Cornex fitting. This is just a, an ordinary brass one and it's got a brass olive in. Now some prefer brass olives and some prefer uh, copper olives. I just use the olive that comes with it. That's good enough for them, so it's good enough for me. And you put the olive on, and the nut on. Trust me, found a bit, bit of twisted copper. Oh my word. So you've got your olive on. Go, you've got your nut on, you've got your olive on. Make sure it's gone in full socket. So you can take your, your copper out and judge that full socket. And tighten it up. Also, if you want to do, you can put some uh, jointing compound on. Uh, you know, that's um, if you're doing a lot, yeah, I'll do it. I, sometimes I do. The thing is with me, if I put it together and it doesn't work, I put that on afterwards. So this is what happens: you just um, make sure that's home. Get your nut on, finger tight, and then hold them against it with one of your implements and then your other one needs to give it a quarter turn that should do that should do for 99 percent of most cases if you go in tougher than that then it could be a cheap fitting so then um, probably put some paste on as well there's no need for PTFE at all, unless this is, we're talking about a new fitting there. Now sometimes you might have an old fitting that's been there for years and years and years and all of a sudden it starts to dripping. So, what do you do with that? Here's your old fitting. It's been on for years and years and years. So the first thing that I would do, first of all, is just give it a little nip. Right, now see if it's if it's you can't nip it you you, you get a sort of feeling for this that if you're pushing too hard you it, it's not going to fix so the best thing to do in that case is 
to take it off, drain down, take it off. Have a look at why it's, you know, and you can see with that one, you see how it's deformed? That's because someone is twisted it and twisted it and twisted it till they can't get any more on and then left it and then it's over time wear and tear it. So, so the best thing to do with them is to replace it all together. But you might not have time, you might not want to do. So the second best thing is the old PTFE, plumber's tape for everything. Put some of that round. And then in that case, we use belt and braces as well. Put some of that on. And then again, take it to you've got finger tight. Then quarter turn. Then try it. If you need to give it more, give it more. But there again, there's, there's an experienced feeling that, that there's, a, there's a point where you know it's going to go click and then you're in shit. So that's the one thing to be careful for. And while we're at it, another point came up about cylinder fittings. Cylinder fittings. Quite often you get somebody phoning and say my cylinder's leaking and when you go it's fitted on the six and they're thinking that you can just give down a little tip, little nip up and it's done. No, 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 no. Never do that. Never do it on the, on the cylinder because you'll come a cropper. It needs draining down, undoing, looking at what's going wrong and in most cases it's corrosion. The zinc's moved out of the fitting and just one little turn and whoa, mother. Uh, so don't go in that situation. Anyway, I hope that's helped you. Uh, for any further information, come across to, to my forum, tomplum.boards.net and we'll see you all there. Goodbye now.